What is up here? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Corpse Party Sweet Such. It goes hysterical birthday bash blind. In the last episode, uh, Kizami was on fire. He was taking out everyone. <laughs> um, he was definitely something in that last episode, and I'm sure you guys found it just as funny as I did. And in this episode, we are joining our rather religious friends over here that we saw, we got a brief glimpse of in an episode, a couple episodes ago, but um, we don't really know all that much about. However, here they are. Um, Azusa is about to open the door. And here we go. Um, according to my dear wife, I was out cold for quite some time. During that entire time, I was apparently resting with my head in her lap. Though, sadly, I didn't remember any of it. Lap pillow is, is top tier. Not that I couldn't get that kind of service from her any time I wanted anyway. But when I woke up, she was in a real hurry to keep moving. Right into that room with the great evil. Oh, uh -huh. hmm. Interesting. So this looks like the room where we are all gathered, but what awaited us inside was nothing like I'd imagined. It was an auditorium with a television. That was it. Wait, where's everyone else? There were countless others in there around the same age as us, but absolutely nothing about it felt particularly scary, scary at all. Okay, so the image didn't show um, that there are a whole bunch of other people, nor is there any background noise to indicate as such, but it is true that everybody else is there. And so they were stuck in the hallways, and they wandered into this party, potentially? <laughs> What's going on, dear wife? I'm not entirely certain myself. It's not as if the room were devoid of tension, but neither was the atmosphere all that tense. The word anticlimactic seemed a proper fit. <laughs> About time you showed up, St. Cruz Girls Academy Class 2-3 student Takai Azusa and Class 2-1 student Kobayashi Iran. But clearly, we couldn't let our guards down just yet, so it seems Sachiko was actually expecting them, which means it's all part of the plan. For some reason, that voice sent shivers down my spine, and when I saw to whom it belonged, the reason became clear. Your wife, that girl, that dress. So clearly, they've had an encounter with Sachiko before. Yes, she is dangerous. Please back away from her. Run. What? You plan to defy me? Red dress. Are you the girl from the occult report that's found its way into all the schools? I hate you. Wow. She's like, you've already seen through my plans. You've taken countless souls who've committed no sins and trapped them here. Oh, not today she hasn't. <laughs> As if to almost admit that she has in previous days. Huh? A very matter-of-fact statement drifted to my ears and caught me by surprise. Today's a culture festival day. Right now, for various reasons, there's something like an athletic meet underway. <laughs> something like. <laughs> um, looking up at the television, it certainly did seem that this was the case. I think I remember seeing the boy crossing the wooden plank before. Oh my, it's Sir Knight. He seems well. Huh? Who's that? Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, him. His name is Kishinoma, and Kishi means knight in Japanese. So, bam! Brave Sir Knight. Good to see him still in one piece. Your brave Sir Knight and the others are engaged in a race to get out of here. Whoever reaches the goal can escape, and bring one other person with them. So what do you say? Will either of you participate as well? You're saying two people can get out of here? I immediately formulated a plan to leave with my dear wife. We'll pass, thanks. But she shot down the offer before I had a chance to say a single word. She probably sees through that this is clearly some sort of trap concocted by Sachiko. We can't just pretend we never saw her. This Sachiko. Dear wife, you are ever mindful. 
The thought of escaping with me never even crossed her mind, it seems. By comparison, her firm commitment made me feel a bit embarrassed. I could never hope to match that willpower. Then you two just stay where you are and behave yourselves. You wouldn't want to render the struggles of your knight and his friends in vain now. Oh, certainly not. It was my intention from the start to simply observe. <laughs> okay, if that's what my dear wife wishes, then I too shall follow suit. Thank you, Ran. <laughs> Think nothing of it. Hey, Mochida-kun, don't those two seem a little familiar to you? Have Ayumi and Satoshi ever interacted with them? Do they? They seem so quirky, you'd think they'd be easy to remember if we'd met them before. If we'd met them, huh? Must just be my imagination, then. Or it could be some, I don't know, parallel universe or alternate timeline in which they've met, and there's some sort of, I guess, communication of, like, the memories or whatever it could be. But I swear I've seen them somewhere before. Maybe some sort of like. Maybe some sort of like occultic magazine or something. They seem to have read the news about the girl in the red dress as well. So maybe they're interested in that sort of thing too. And that's where Ayumi has specific. Or like specifically, Ayumi has met them before? I'm not sure. After crossing the wooden plank, it's another classroom. <laughs> what a shocker. What challenge lies inside here? Sitting on the desks in the classroom were numerous cardboard boxes. What kind of traps await me in here? I wonder. Hmm? Morishige, what are you doing? What's wrong? You can't continue? Is it like a quiz show or something? Mmm. No, it's not a mental challenge, but a physical one. Here, have a look. So having more bodies is helpful, let alone Morishige is probably not as physically adept as Kishinoma. Morishige grabbed the, closet, the closest box to him and tilted it toward Yoshiki to show off its contents. Inside was a frilly, floofy kind of sexy maid outfit. Huh? The heck is that? Are those cat ears on a maid outfit? Morishige, are you into this kind of thing? <laughs> of course not. That's the problem. As if if he were more into it, he'd already be dressed in all the clothes. I don't understand. What's the problem? You open the box and there's an outfit inside. Yeah. My impression was there would be some sort of physical challenge in terms of maybe moving the boxes somewhere, or there was something heavy inside them, but I don't know. And if I don't wear that outfit, then you can't continue onward, huh? So? According to Sachiko's instructions, yes. That's right. Go on now, Kishinoma. You pick one too, so you can move on to the next room. Considering who's responsible for filling these boxes, I don't expect any of the others will have anything better in them. Admittedly, this isn't really that much of a challenge. This is more so like a swallow your masculinity pill for a moment. That seems a safe assumption. So we really have to wear whatever we find in these boxes before we can move on? Sure, it may be ridiculous or embarrassing for a moment, but especially compared to, I don't know, a piece of bread trying to eat you or something of the sort, uh, it's not quite as dangerous, is it now? Although, for what it's worth, I wouldn't be surprised if Sachiko came up with something even more creative than, I guess, bread trying to eat someone. Uh, so, maybe maybe I just can't perceive the danger just yet. I tried the door earlier. It wouldn't budge an inch. 
Figures. Guess we really do have to just go along with whatever rules Sachiko comes up with. I really do want to save Shinozaki, but if I wind up pulling out an embarrassing maid outfit too, things are gonna get pretty real. <laughs> Yoshiki opened the lid on the nearest box and peeped inside. Peered inside. Probably not much different. Oh, come on. He produced from the box a pure white wedding dress. <laughs> like heck I'm wearing this. A wedding dress. That's actually really funny. I thought perhaps these boxes were prepared with the idea that maybe one of the girls would open them. But it seems more likely we're just being picked on. I mean... He's got a point. Is this really the time for you to be coolly analyzing the situation? I would argue that, I mean, while you're in a race and you probably don't have a ton of time, especially with somebody like Sachiko creating all these challenges, you probably should be taking whatever time you can because your life is on the line. Kishinomo, which do you think is the better choice? A maid outfit or a wedding dress? Huh? Personally, I feel the wedding dress is slightly less objectionable. You think? I was sort of thinking that the wedding dress seemed more embarrassing. And there you have it, you've each decided upon your outfit. In that case, perhaps we should exchange outfits with one another. Certainly, neither is ideal, but we could at least wear our preferred choices. Exchange outfits, huh? Wear the selected outfit or exchange? I... Don't know what the rules are, per Sachiko's explanation. So I don't know if we should try to exchange. I don't think there's any way to really predict what's going to happen here. I would say that the least risky but most convenient but least also least convenient is to wear the selected outfit whereas the slightly more risky because you're maybe adding an extra level of complexity or potentially breaking an unspoken rule or something like that um, but also slightly more preferable for each character is to exchange I think we're gonna choose to just wear the selected outfit yeah. No, I'm betting there's a clause in the fine print somewhere that says no exchanges are allowed. That is technically correct. The rules do state that we must each wear the outfit we selected. Okay, so we got that prediction correct. But also, what the heck, Woody she gave? That was part of the rules. Why didn't you tell us that before making us decide? Why do you even suggest exchanging and breaking the rules? This is Sachiko we're talking about. <laughs> So I guess I've got to wear the wedding dress, whether I like it or not. And I the maid outfit with the cat ears. We truly have to do this, don't we? Yeah. We should just give up and get it over with. At least in your case, you can always make like you're wearing a costume for a play or something. I feel like literally every single person you ever told about this experience or who saw you in this experience would understand that, hey, I'm a very masculine person, but I had to wear a feminine costume in order to save myself and not die and potentially save another person of my choice. Wow, what a reasonable decision. <laughs> like, get over it, guys. <laughs> A play. That would make this a slightly easier pill to swallow, I suppose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Though if Mayu saw me in such an outfit, I fear I might have to take my own life in embarrassment. Oh, believe me, I completely understand. If Shinozaki saw me in this wedding dress, man... <laughs> I 
I think the idea is maybe they're going to televise them wearing the particular outfits or something, and that embarrassment is going to be the punishment, per se. I, I should also remember, they are high schoolers, right? Uh, young high schoolers at that. And so maybe in terms of, like, relative embarrassment is probably a lot higher in terms of wearing something like that in front of their peers. And, um, yeah, so I, I should keep that in mind, not to give them too much trash, but... Regardless, now we have Taguchi. He appears to be in the same room, and Taguchi, I believe, was the the film, the film, I guess, like reporter or whatever who accompanied Naho's, I think, sensei or like teacher or something something like that. Um, and so maybe he's just running around with a camera. Maybe he's helping out with the television aspect. Who who knows? Regardless, good morning, everyone. Field reporter Taguchi at your service. I've just arrived at the dress up challenge room. Sounds like he's whispering. I'm not sure how many girls remain in the race at this point, but I'll say right now, my heartbeat is going tweet tweet just thinking about it. Get it? It rhymes. Heartbeat, tweet, tweet. Heartbeat, tweet, tweet. I mean, it's not a good rhyme, but still. So, how do you even put this on? The, the real challenge. Seems impossible to do by oneself. Oh my, it seems there already there's already someone in here. Judging by the voices, I'd estimate they're boys. This this whisper thing. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we have a pair of boys. Specifically, Kishinuma Yoshiki and Morishige Sakutaro, it looks like. Let's keep quiet and see where this goes. <laughs> Meanwhile, the television in the auditorium continued to broadcast events as they unfolded. <laughs> yep, that's uh, that's where I expected this to go. Shigeni, why are you wearing a maid outfit? What's happening? <laughs> I'm sorry to ask, Shinoma, but would you zip me up? <laughs> can't very well say no, I mean. I could tell you to do it yourself, but I can't do it myself either. Thank you. Once mine is zipped, you have my word, I'll assist you in zipping yours as well. Your word? That seems a little over the top. Agreed. Why are the two of them getting changed together? And is Kishinoma wearing a, a wedding dress? Were the instructions not broadcast on TV as well? Or is it not apparent that they're clearly doing this because they must? Yoshiki could be seen on television stepping over, stepping on the hem of his dress and falling over. That's pretty funny. Be careful, Kishinoma. <laughs> Sorry, I've never worn anything with a hem before. Well, that's certainly true. I'd be more worried if you were used to wearing clothes like this. What? Why are they embracing each other? Is there no audio? Didn't something like this happen once before? Except it was kind of the opposite? The opposite? So I was saved from falling over by you? Pretty sure, yeah. Do I remember something like that? I don't think so, but I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, that. Actually, that was... What's going on? 
since when were Shigeni and Kishinima so close? Actually, now that I think about it, I have seen the two of them huddle together and head home. Could it be that I'm currently seeing something I'm not supposed to see, like I did back then? Is she implying the existence of like a secret relationship, or...? If I'm not supposed to see this Shigeni, then I won't watch. I'm not looking, Shigeni, I swear. A little too late, I guess. She couldn't quite make up her mind, however, if this was something she wasn't supposed to see, or simply something she was afraid to look at. Either way, Mayu closed her eyes to the proceedings. <laughs> Can you guys hear the heartbeat in the background? I guess I really have to put on these cat ears too, don't I? You guys hear that? <laughs> Afraid so. <laughs> Cat ears? Oh, Shigeni, honestly, what are you doing? <laughs> I feel like the type of person who would wear these unironically is a person to be feared, but nonetheless, um. How's this? Something wrong? What did she get? <laughs> Come now, my lady, it's time to change. Allow me to assist you. Wait, why? Uh, what the heck are you saying? Yurski's like, hold up a minute, we have to wear the outfits. Nobody said we had to play the part. Now, now, that language will never do. <laughs> How many times must I tell you? It is imperative for a lady to mind her language at all times. I cannot seem to drill this into your head enough. Oh my goodness. Hey, what the heck is wrong with you? Shigeni, please tell me this is some kind of act. Oh, it's starting to really bother me. There's not a thing wrong with me, my lady. It is you who are in the wrong. Come on, man. Enough with the my lady crap. It's like wearing a maid outfit. It's turned you into an actual maid or something. Maybe there's some sort of, like, magic or something that Sajiko is using so that once they actually fully have the outfit on, they, I guess, impersonate or enact whatever type of outfit they have on. So we're just waiting on Yoshiki to finally have his wedding dress fully on or whatever. Don't you made me and stop talking nonsense. Hmm? Have you turned back then? <laughs> My lady, why do you say such cruel things to me? Oh, could it be I've said something to offend you? <laughs> huh, now you've gone all weird again? Well, whatever, you didn't offend me, you just creeped me out a little. <laughs> then I must insist you punish me at once. Where is this going? What? Shigeni, what on earth are you saying? If I've upset you in any way, then I must insist you punish me to your heart's content. I beg of you. <laughs> yeah, beg all you want. This is pretty screwed up, man. No kidding. What do you think you're doing? <laughs> you... What have you been saying all this time? I'm so confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that... Is, is Morishige doing this intentionally or no? Uh, 
Oh, what a kindly mistress you are, to show such concern for one such as I. Uh, um, Morishige? Pay me no heed. Punish me, my lady. Punish me however you please. I can take it. <laughs> I guess this is what Morishige is into. Please, my lady, I beg of you, punish me. <laughs> I... no, this is definitely a no. Give me a break already, man. Don't say such nonsense, just have at me. <laughs> Yoshiki's like, I'm going crazy in here. Look, I... Ah, please, I'm on my hands and knees. If you won't punish me, my lady, I fear I'll go mental. What? Is there a reason you're facing away from me? Uh-oh. Oh, you're such a tease. It's not fair. What? What is going on? <laughs> Simply imagining the punishments you might inflict upon me, my lady, makes my body numb with delightment and sets my heart ablaze. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're scaring me, man. You're really starting to scare me. Like, this is totally some S&M stuff, isn't it? Kishinama, you must decide what you're going to do with me. I still don't know if this is like part of Sachiko's challenge or, or what's going on here. I thought the whole idea was they had to put on the costumes and maybe the door would unlock or something like that, but this is clearly going quite a bit further. <laughs> Look, seriously, I'm not into this, okay? You just won't shut up about me punishing you and it's really starting to mess with my head. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, my butt. Please spank my butt, my lady. <laughs> this certainly escalated quickly. Are you saying if I spank you, you'll be satisfied? <laughs> Actually, this is starting to sound familiar. It's like what happened to Shinozaki a few times, when she got all weird on me. Morishige, are you... possessed? I think I am. My actions these last few minutes have been very much against my will. I'm shocked he's even able to get that sentence out. I should hope so. <laughs> With so much emphasis. Now come, spank me, spank me hard, come! Hey, do you seriously want me to spank you? Don't be stupid, Kishinama! <laughs> but you know, there's a chance that if I hit you hard enough, the spear will be satisfied and leave your body. <laughs> Hurry up and spank my butt! <laughs> I'm like even skeptical about... <laughs> I'm like skeptical about even putting my own audio of myself saying these words out on the internet. <laughs> Well, what happened to you, Shigini? You're not the same Shigini I know. This strange behavior is obviously tied to that maid outfit, Morishige. Can... Mayu should be able to hear them talking about it, right? Uh, 
I think you're right. So if you tear that thing apart, you'll probably go back to normal. <laughs> you mustn't attack my clothes, my lady, but my butt. Hurry, hurry up, spank me with all your might. <laughs> I'm beginning to think it's not punishment you're after. You just want me to hate you. Who the heck would want you to spank them? Go ahead with the plan to tear off this outfit. I fully support that idea. Alright, you got it. Things might get a little rough, so you better not get mad at me later, you hear? <laughs> what is going on? Could you not have just unzipped it, or what? I can't bear to keep my cl eyes closed after all. Are we finally gonna get a visual now? <laughs> That's certainly quite the sight. We did get a brief glimpse of this, I think, during the OP, right? Mayu popped her eyes open, unable to stand, not knowing what was going on. And onto those eyes befell quite an image. It was Yoshiki in a wedding dress, clawing at the breasts of Morishige in a maid outfit with cat ears. <laughs> Things were pretty touch and go there for a while. I owe you one, Kishinuma. <laughs> oh, believe me, I was suffering just as much as you were. I am grateful, from the bottom of my heart, that you finally came to your senses. <laughs> Man, if anyone else had seen me like that, I don't think I'd ever be able to recover. <laughs> oh, Kishinoma, spank my butt. <laughs> don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I promise. As long as we have an understanding on that. Suddenly, a sound rang out through the room. It was like someone nearby had slipped and knocked something over. Murishige and Yoshiki both immediately spun around to face the direction of the sound. Who's there? Did the door unlock? Don't tell me I'm hearing things now. Oh, that was probably just Taguchi. No, I heard it as well. In that case, come on out. I know you're there. You can't hide from me. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. I have no intention of upsetting you. Just calm down. Who are you? Oh, where are my manners? I'm field reporter Taguchi. Field reporter? And what exactly was a field reporter doing lurking in the shadows? What do you mean, what was I doing? My job, a live broadcast. A live broadcast? So are you saying all the things we didn't hear a minute ago were being seen by other people? Yeah, that's the long and short of it. Bear in mind, I'm not doing this because I want to. Not everybody can defy Sachiko like you guys, after all. I don't want to hear your excuses. I know, I'm so sorry. Just tell me, where were you broadcasting to? Not somewhere where Mayu could see me, I hope. Mayu? 
I don't know if anyone named Mayu is watching or not. I just know Sachiko had me set up a TV in the auditorium for this. So, everyone in the auditorium saw all of that. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Yikes. The sound of a microphone activating resonated through the loudspeaker in the room. It was from the auditorium. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait, is that Mayu? Mayu, is that you? Were you watching me all this time? Watching us? Uh huh, I tried not to look, but I could still hear every word. Is Morishige's death gonna be like suicide or something? Seems like it, I guess. <laughs> Morishige grabbed his head in both hands and fell to his knees in abject agony, and he wailed as if heaven and earth alike were crumbling all around him. <laughs> and this is what makes Morishige crack, I guess? <laughs> Don't look at me! Don't look at me, Mayu! I don't know if this is actually intentional or not, but this is a pretty neat uh, reversal of the situation for the very first Corpse Party game, where Mayu asks Morishige not to look at her. Hey, calm down, Morishige, so you were seen. Nothing you can do about it now. No big deal. Kishinuma, just who are you to tell me what can and can't bother me? You can even begin to understand what I'm going through right now. Yeah, but it's too late to change what happened now. How about we take a souvenir photo to remember it by or something so we can laugh at it later? What? What are you doing with my phone? Looking for camera mode, of course. Ah, here it is. Stop! Is he gonna see all the dead bodies or something, or what? Yoshiki ignored Morishige's objections and innocently snapped a photo. Kishinuma! Kisama! Kishinuma! Jeez. No need to blow a gasket, sheesh. Wait. You're. you're really mad, aren't you? Kishinuma! Omae wa. Kishinuma, you have touched something of mine that must never be touched. I was just trying to lighten the mood a little. If it bothers you that much, I'll delete it. Let's see now. Here is the killer, where he goes into the photos and sees the library of dead bodies or whatever. As Yoshiki attempted to figure out how to access the photos on the unfamiliar phone, Morishige violently snatched it out of his hands altogether. No need to force it out of my hands, man. It's your phone. If you want it back, all you had to do was ask. Did you see? Huh? Did you see? Did you see it? Morishige, you're so creepy. Well, I mean, I was here with you, so of course. That's not what I mean, you stupid idiot. The pictures, did you see my pictures? I feel like... Yeah, I, I guess I did, but it's clearly not leaving that great of an impression, or like that huge of an impression on Yoshiki. Morishige, I just kind of leave it as it is. <laughs> well, this is a fine how do you do. Moriga. <laughs> Moriga. Uh, 
The woods. <laughs> the woods, they're calling to me. What, what does that mean? With blank eyes, Murishige slowly stumbled out of the room, pale and out of sorts. He seemed possessed, but not as before. Oi! Murishige! Where Hey, Morishige, the heck do you think you're doing? Hiyo okay? Just saw your friend leaving the room. <laughs> Not that I'm really in a position to comment about that being essentially the cause of all this. Morishige! Morishige! Did he die? Yoshiki ran after his friend, but to his surprise and slight injury, collided with an invisible wall and was knocked back. <laughs> The, the heck? There's an invisible wall in the door frame. Is there? I'm not feeling anything there. Probably because you're not part of this race. Or perhaps you haven't quite finished changing yet, you're not allowed to leave the room until you do. That's right, participants in the race must fully change in order to progress onward. It's the rule. I believe that was made very clear. Is he missing something for his head or what? Darn it. Okay then, old man, help me change. Will you? I really need to get moving before Morishige does something stupid. Uh, sure. Old man, he says. That hurts, you know. I'm not that old. Hey, hurry it up already, old geezer. Uh, uh, sorry. Wait for me, Morishige. Oh my. So, so he was very literally speaking about the woods calling to him. It wasn't even just a figure of speech. It was Morishige has started to wander into the woods now. Probably to his own death, presumably, and it's up to Yoshiki to rely on Taguchi to change so he can run out there and rescue him? I'm, I'm pretty confused, and Morishige's reaction is rather um, blown out of proportion, but nevertheless it is Morishige, and we know he's not fully mentally intact, in my opinion at least. Um, but we're going to see what happens in these woods, whether or not Kishinoma is actually able to save what is she get at all? And what even is going to happen in the woods? I, I don't know. I don't know. This game takes so many twists and turns. Uh, it's really difficult to predict what's going to happen. But it's certainly been entertaining. There's no doubt about that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. But until the next episode, this has been Night Zero. And this mission is complete.